welcome to the Bucks Nuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, May 29th, 2019. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by the people's champ, Matt Baxendell. Got a nice little blend of recruiting, regular team coverage talk, and some other stuff as well. Let's get let's start with the recruiting backs. Julian Fleming, the number one wide receiver in the country, five star recruit, of course, number six overall player in the country. Uh, in the 2020 class will make his decision, at least announce his decision this Friday. A young man out of Catawissa, Pennsylvania. The crystal ball picks back 71% to Ohio State, but it's even better than what it looks like there. 71% to Ohio State looks great, right? But last 10 crystal ball picks all to Ohio State. The gurus that I really I put a lot of stock into, and I know you do too, the dean, Bill Curlick, the Bank, Bill Green, and the Fong, Steve Wilfong, all have crystal balled Ohio State for Julian Fleming. Again, he will announce Friday. Um, I'm feeling good. How you feeling, Bax? We've got a double bill on it. We're good. Uh, <laughs> you know, anytime that the Bank and the Dean are on the same page on something, you can pretty much lock it in stone and uh, chisel it in because it's, it's, it's going to happen. And I love this. I don't know about you, Dave, but not only is this a guy that Penn State was, quote, supposed to get, but it's a third super elite receiver in this class. And candidly, we shouldn't be shocked that OSU is getting excellent recruits at wide receiver. Not only is Brian Hartline killing it, but these kids all saw what happened last year with the Ryan Day passing game and the right quarterback in the system. So uh, I think having these guys see that last year, you're directly seeing the result in recruiting. And I, I, I just think that this is going to be uh, lots of schadenfreude towards the Penn State fans who are losing a kid from their backyard uh, can you imagine if the number one re- receiver and the number six player in the country was from Dayton and Ohio State didn't get him? That would be very disappointing. So it's going to be a very fun day for Ohio State when they land Julian Fleming, and that's a when, not an if. And it's interesting how he is you know, going to announce this Friday. That coincides with Kendall Milton's official visit to Ohio State. He will, he will visit Ohio State this weekend, the five-star running back from California. Number three running back in the country, number 21 overall player in the country in the 2020 class, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. Uh, you know, it, I mean, it looks good. You know, talking to the dean, and I know Dean was on uh, the show uh, talking about this as well. Uh, it sounds pretty good for Ohio State. They might have to sweat it out a little bit. But, man, right now Ohio State seems to be in a pretty good position to land Kendall Milton back. Yeah, and this is another – side effect of the way the offense looked last year. Everybody thinks that Ohio State's offense is going to be uber explosive. I don't think anybody worried about Ryan Day being able to recruit offensive players. You know, we're still waiting for the defensive side of the ball to sort of manifest itself for Coach Day, and that'll come with time. But I love everything about this Milton visit. Not only is Fleming announcing that day, but Ohio State and Rutgers have had sort of this like uh, like codependent relationship in recruiting camps over the past couple of years, where like Ohio State's the shark and Rutgers is like the scum suckers eating the, cleaning the bottom of the shark's belly. So Ohio State camps go to like the Rutgers camps and like, you know, the coaches will be there for OSU, but more kids will come to see Rutgers that maybe aren't OSU caliber. Well, this year, Ryan Day is not going to the camp. He's sending some of his assistant coaches so he can stay in Columbus and have Kendall Milton's official visit one-on-one with the head coach the whole weekend. So uh, it's just another way that Ohio State's sort of trying to maximize its recruiting abilities. And you know, I have to say, a lot of people are worried about OSU's recruiting uh, for various reasons. I know there's a lot of people who are not pleased necessarily with the smaller numbers on the defensive side of the ball. But everything you're seeing on the offensive side of the ball, you're going to have a lot of five-star caliber offensive players who are looking to become Buckeyes. And Milton, look, it's not going to be you know an instantaneous commitment. If it is, you know, Dwayne Long's already running naked through the streets. But uh, he's a guy I think Ohio State certainly in the top one or two for has a fantastic chance of landing him. Let's switch to some team coverage. Uh, let's look at the current roster and how it looks at running back for the Buckeyes. Obviously, with J.K. Dobbins coming back, the Buckeyes are in, are in very good shape with the starting running back. Uh, you know, we both agree he needs to play a lot better than he did last year, but I think he will. Um, but to, when you look at this running back situation as a whole for the Buckeyes in 2019 with J.K. Dobbins, Darren McCall, you know, Master Teague, Marcus Crowley, maybe Steel Chambers, although I think maybe he'll redshirt, and if he does – Play will just be four games. They can still probably redshirt him, and I still wonder if he's going to be a linebacker anyway. But you look at this running back situation as a whole, backs. How do you analyze it? You know, it's fascinating. Uh, I'm one of the loudest proponents of wanting to see run DMC this year. I'm still not convinced. Uh, I've said this before. I'm not convinced we're not going to see him magically all of a sudden start playing H-back a lot. But 
uh, I think DeMario McCall could be a, a gigantic impact player. And I'll be honest, there's more I need to see from J.K. Dobbins. We know there are certain things he does extraordinarily well, right? Uh, he, he's a human juke button, right? Um, but the, he, there, there was a time last year when OSU wasn't getting some of those short yards. And it was a time where it felt like J.K. Dobbins was going down real easy. And I, I think Dobbins isn't necessarily the most suited guy to run between the tackles, but it's something you're going to need to do. And this, again, this is kind of just saying, let's look at what Dobbins does well, right? Getting the ball in his hands out of the backfield, he's a machine. Uh, he, you know, he's a guy who has unbelievable speed, can beat anybody in the open field. He's a great player. But you need that thunder, that Mike Weber up the middle thunder to go with J.K. Dobbins to make his lightning really flash. And I have to say, I, I loved what I saw out of Crowley in the spring game. I really did. It, it, maybe just that helmet and the way his pads are, but he looks like a bowling ball. But you need that guy. When it, you know, whenever the, the going gets tough and it's third and two, he gets three yards. It doesn't matter. He'll just fall forward, right? And like Carlos Hyde, how many times did Carlos Hyde ever go backwards with the ball? You need that guy. And I, I like that. And then Teague is a guy who is so intriguing because, you know, we read in the boarding house that he's one of the fastest guys in the team. They clocked him at a hand time sub 4 four forty, which, you know, of course, that probably won't hold up whenever laser times come in, but that's still super fast. It tells you a lot about him if he's one of the fastest guys in the team. And he's a guy that seems like could do everything. So I don't know how this rotation is going to play out, but I do know they need some thunder. They need some serious thunder to go along with J.K. Dobbins. And I think they have the pieces in place for it. I'm keeping my eyes on Crowley right now as the guy who could really be that thunder. But I I love the depth at running back right now because you've got four guys we're talking about here, all of whom, if you told me, hey, they had to have 20-something carries in a game, I'd feel pretty reasonable about it right now. Dax, do you like the Drake? Do you hate the Drake? Uh, the latest, for those that don't know, before you answer those questions, for those that don't know, and I can't believe anybody wouldn't have heard this by now, the chairman of Ohio State's Board of Trustees, Michael Gasser, um, who was expected to hold that post until 2021, uh, abruptly resigned last Friday. I mean, the ultimate news dump, right? Not only on a Friday, but a Friday of a holiday weekend. Uh, he resigns, and, you know, he, to his credit, he didn't say anything publicly, but. The Columbus Dispatch, great reporting by them. They had a source that said, you know, the gasser was just dismayed by the way that Michael Drake was, you know, the job that he was doing as president, and they didn't give specifics of what, had, you know, if it had anything to do with the, you know, Urban Meyer situation or the the current situation with the deceased Strauss pervert who, uh, you know, their Ohio State's going through all that. But man, I mean, Bax, do you like the Drake? Do you hate the Drake? I think my opinion on the Drake is well known. I have disdain for the Drake. I can't wait till the Drake gets shipped back to California and stays there. Uh, I, I would argue that the Drake makes us miss Karen Holbrook. And if you had told me that in 2005, I would have punched you in the mouth. So, uh, you know, I don't know if we've ever had a worse president than Drake. I'll be honest. I don't know what he's brought to Ohio State that actually has moved the academic institution forward, that has moved the perception and the prestige of the university forward. I think he's been terrible. He's a fish out of water who doesn't understand the Midwestern culture that this school is built upon. And candidly, I'm counting down the days until he's gone whenever Ohio State can go out and go up to Youngstown State and steal Jim Trestle to fix something in the, at the state's flagship university again. Because Jim Trestle needs to be the president of this university. And that's something people would have laughed at 10 years ago. But guess what? He's, he's an esteemed president of a major university now. I dare say Jim Trestle gets Ohio State better than maybe anybody who you could conceivably imagine to be put into that position. And I'm not picking him because he's the former football coach here. I'm saying Jim Trestle as an administrator has shown he has the ability to do it. And Jim Trestle is somebody who knows what this university wants and needs. It's a reason they brought back Gordon Gee twice, right? And there's a reason that Jim Trestle needs to come back as well. He would be the complete opposite of Michael the Disaster Drake. And uh, at this point, I think it's hilarious. The dispatch is like, we have an anonymous source, and then they give exactly what Gasser's thinking. The anonymous source is totally not Gasser, right? But either way, it's a disaster whenever the head of the board resigns because of differences with your terrible president, who's only contractually obligated through 2020. So the sooner that guy's gone, the better. That's all we can really say about him, because he, he's one of the biggest disasters to come through Ohio State since John Cooper. Yeah, very well said. I mean, I, 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 as I said, and you just said earlier in the show, I, I put on Twitter a couple of days ago, I said, 
Ohio State probably never thought it would be longing for the Karen Holbrook days, but here they are uh, with Michael Drake. Hey, um, they hired him. He, he didn't hire himself, but they've got to do something about that. He has been a disaster in all areas. Going back to how he ran the band director out of town, I mean, that guy deserved maybe to be punished, you know, Michael Waters. But, I mean, to, to like, ruin the guy's life over that, I mean, for a culture that he didn't start, that, you know, it, 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 not that we need to get into whole, that whole conversation again, but that was an early ominous sign about Mar- Michael Drake, and they've got to figure something out over there. But uh, we don't he, figure he anything out like, about the pe- Go ahead. He, he, Dave, he treats OSU like he's running Cal Berkeley or something. Like he's running UC Santa Barbara. I, I don't. I don't think he realizes anything culturally about Ohio. Well, I don't like think he's he realizes UC Irvine, or like he's running yeah. UC Irvine. Yeah, he, which is where he, he comes he, from. He, yeah, exactly. And he's making decisions that'll keep the West Coast the academic literati uh, happy. He's not making decisions that are good for the state of Ohio or Ohio State University. He doesn't seem to show any respect for the traditions of this school. In fact, he seems to show a lot of disdain towards them, and everything just continues to try to corporatize and sanitize the university. And I'm sorry, I like when our university has a little bit of character. I like when our university reflects our state. I know it's a shocking concept, but maybe not everybody has to be exactly the same way inside a sanitized box like Drake seems to want. Give me the Ohio State University. Don't give me some boring school that is only concerned with what their average SAT score is. Like, give me back Ohio State. That's what I want. And unfortunately, he has at least a couple years left on his contract. Uh, so, gosh, um, they, they need to uh, do something about that, maybe buy him out. Um, they, they've got to do something about that. But fortunately, we at Bucknuts have the people's champ, Matt Baxendale. Thank you very much for your insights. As always, Bax, you can read his column. It's a must-read column. I say it all the time on the show. It is the bucket. It drops every Sunday. Thank you very much to Mr. Matt Baxendale, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning in to the show. I appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great day. Let's try the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Bye.